Okay. Uh, <laughs> right let then. Me just... Let's kick some ass. Yeah, let's kick some ass. So, um, welcome to the finale. Hopefully, for me, for my for my sanity, the finale for now um, of uh, um, <laughs> the graveyard shift. Um, you have just to recap quickly. You all got dumped on this planet, this moon called Daedal- Daedalon. <laughs> Uh, you um, made your way through to the library. To you, you got given this mission to find um, something called the Revela- the Revelator. It's the Revelator, the Revelator. And you made your way through a cathedral towards a library where you thought you could get the information to find the, the Galfredus Crypt, which is hu- apparently housing the Revelator. It's been buried with like the last ancestor of the Galfredus um, family uh, apparently the revelator is uh, something of great power um, although it's been redacted about what that is what the information of that is uh, you got to the library and you found archivist um, Abiabar who stupid name can never pronounce it right archivist Abiabar who has um, told you that she's lost the two servo skull twins that could potentially give you this information <coughs> surprise surprise like, like that wasn't wasn't planned beforehand so um, you've gone to find uh, the person who you think might have these called Diomedes and you've gone to the this you've Talk to talk to everyone in the bazaar. Um, Kalia pointed you out to someone uh, to Diomedes who may be in the Jolly Sailor Pub, and that essentially is where you are now. Uh, you are all on the right map, aren't you? You are all in the pub. Let me just double check. Yeah, yeah, the Jolly Undertaker. Yeah, cool. that's okay. right. Yeah, um, yeah, where you have somehow, for whatever reason, you've bumped into Rax Overon, who was the well-spoken douchebag that the first person that you guys ever met of of your first ever session of wrath and glory um there he is just sat there smug as fuck asking you what the fuck you're doing here and yeah we we open it i guess we open it there (sighs) well um it seems that's rather difficult individual appears to be ahead of us again. Ah, Rax, you shit brain. <laughs> I hear you play poker with someone that uh, might be interesting to us. And what the hell are you doing on this rock, anyway? He... He sort of, he sort of gives you a warm smile, which is uncharacteristic of him. But I think... He knows that either this could go one way or the other, so he's, uh, you know, he's not surrounded by necessarily by, you know, guards of the Imperium right now. So this could go quite sour. And he says, "Well, are you coming over for a drink, or are you simply going to stand there and admire my handsome frame?" It's been a long day already. I think, uh, I think a drink will be good this time. Well, I think we've got business we need to resolve with your friend here first. So, um, Brick and um, Jab move out of the way to allow you guys to sit down. Yeah, I'll take a seat next to him. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, cool. And I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll look to the... Uh, I'll look to the, the barkeep. I don't know if they can see me from where I am. And uh, I'll have um, uh, two, three Outlander shorts, please. And uh, it's the it's the thin, it's the really small glasses, the Outlander shorts, and they are they are known throughout to be really strong. And uh, they're they're quite dubious in their quality, Outlander shorts. They're not always. Um, they're not always a um, kind of bona fide drink. It's uh, it can it's got a bit of variation in how it's mixed up. This one, um, but uh, you know they're they're pretty strong, and they're uh, they're like a non-official uh, drink of the worlds. <laughs> cool, I like it. And Rax turns and says, "Well, if you're ordering drinks, I'll have a dead man's finger 
and he turns to you uh, uh, your sort of vacant look and he says uh, it's a shot made from the mushrooms that grow here I'd suggest the same it's uh, good strong stuff sure thing we'll finish our outlander shorts first mind <laughs> but yeah count us in and I'll beckon the other two to come over and sit down yes I'll take a ranker I think you can um, check this. I'll just sit you down. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Rax, a pleasure bumping into you again. Uh, what a what a place, huh? This city. <laughs> Quite. Well, uh, I'm here on behalf of my father. So, he's in the servo skull business. In fact, uh, he's got one of the major. He's one of the major stakeholders over at the uh, main manufacturer here on Daedalum. Um, Diomedes here, he helps me acquire a few extra bits. Well, well, well. Diomedes, pleased to make your acquaintance. Not the first time today we've heard your name. All right, that don't surprise me. I'm a popular man in these parts. Can get you anything I can. Anything you, anything you want, anything at all. Let's just say you're not so popular down at the library at the moment. Library? Where the fuck would I be at the library? <laughs> well, they used to have a full complement of servo skulls, what I heard. Nah, that lady's talking shit. Um, all man, all man, could be, could be a man. They're talking shit. And, uh, and the... And that lady, of course, uh, who doesn't really know what she's talking about. What uh, what might it cost her to get uh, get the servo skulls she's missing found again? What do you think the uh, the going rate is for a couple of a couple of just library only library servo skulls? Not valuable to anyone other than her, really. And he goes to say something back, but Rax sort of puts his hand up to quiet him. Listen, Diomedes is my man. If you want information out of him, you'll have to make it worth our time. Uh, and I turn, to, I turn to the others. You know, I want a second opinion on this. <clears throat> I look back. I'm just like, well, uh, what a sort of thing are you after? What do you need? How do we loosen these gears? <clears throat> Well, I'm a man of many needs, but not many wants, to be honest with you. So, you tell me what you can offer me, and then I'll see if it's worth my information from Diomedes here. Well, in return for what we're looking for, we may be able to offer you something from the tomb complex of the Gelfredus family. Do you believe there's anything in there that might interest you? Oh. Now that is interesting. Tell me more. Well, your friend here, Diomedes, uh, by accident, may have taken something that could lead us to something of no use to anyone else, but quite valuable to us. And that uh, and that item, that item, may well be in this tomb. However, we don't know much about that tomb complex, or even uh, where the Galfredus family might have uh, might have that. But that information we could find on one of those two servo skulls, I think. Right. So you're telling me that my man has in possession something that could lead him to potential wealth and treasures and you want me to hand that over to you do you, do you oh. see how fucking stupid you sound right now do you understand this it's not got any resale value so when I say that it is of interest to us and valuable to us not in the way that uh, cold hard currency would be of value but uh, as you know information is a currency right and there's something, something in that tomb complex that uh, 
that could be very, very interesting to us in that sense. But no resale value for you. So yeah, there is value to it. But also, if you know anything about that complex, you know that there might be some items that could be of use to you. Listen. And we are brave enough to go in there and get it. Because you bet that place is rigged. You bet it's rigged to blow. The moment one of your men, as bold as Diomedes here is, goes in there, his time is up. You see how it only took us a morning to come and find him? I don't think your man here has got what it takes to go in there and extract something so carefully. Us, on the other hand, well, we might find something in there worth your while. See, I like you. If we were, if you were born from a different string, I'd have you on my team. I like the way you think and I like the way you talk. It's just, I'm the one with the power right now. I'm the one with the bargaining chip. So I'll tell you what, why don't Brick, Brick and Rack here break your fucking legs and I'll go get it for myself. And then if I want to sell it to you, I will. <clears throat> I look to the others. You realize we've done this dance before, right? And it didn't end up too well for you. <laughs> we may have done that dance on, on that moon, but this moon has different rules. And what would those rules be? If I shoot you between the eyes, will it be a problem? Oh, I can assure you, you raise one weapon against me, and everyone in this fucking bar will raise their weapons against you. I tell you what, you seem like... I was going to say a fair man. That's not the sort of man that you seem like. But you're a man nonetheless. <laughs> I'll grant you a courtesy. I'll tell you what I'll offer you. You take shit top here and dick and you let them come with us and we'll let them stand outside this entrance to wherever the hell this shitty tomb is. When we come out, we get to keep what we want and they get the rest of the spoils. How about that? But I don't want them fucking up any trip mechanisms any traps or trying to follow us down there because they're only going to get them killed and us killed there's where i think our deal lands i'll let them come with us and take the other things we take we we, we remove from the tomb but we get to keep the one we want <laughs> you see the two ogren look at each other after you've just insulted them yeah he, he called me he called you shit top no, 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 he called you shit top. I'm dick. No, wait. He insulted us both. <laughs> <laughs> Rax is sort of like, he's got his hat and he's got his head in his hands. He's like, for fuck's sake. Look, doesn't matter what he fucking called you. He called you it. Look, I, this is, this is, a, this is a no deal. You have nothing of interest for me. I'm just, you're wasting my time and you're in my presence. So either you leave now, or we have to get personal. Um, whilst we're doing this and they're sort of talking, can we maybe see like the first person view from Ikavon and see whether I can maybe remote hack any, or at least assess what the kind of the security systems of this bar are? Sure. Well, there's like gun turrets in the ceiling or something. So, you would have you'd have probably observed this as you walked in. There, there's there's no like there's no gun turrets on the ceiling. Um, no. This bar is filled with. Um, there's no one of office in. Even though some of the pictures look like guards and some of the pictures, I've just added them just because I needed some pictures. Um, there's no one of <laughs> office in this bar. It's a seedy, shady bar. It's set at the very back of the. Um, the sort of the shanty area um, and the bazaar. So you're just surrounded by like low lives scum, like semi mutants, um, scavengers. Um, some like grave robbers are probably here as well, and grave diggers. It's it's just it's filled with just like like general riffraff of the planet of the moon. Um, basically, what you're asking me is, if you start a fight, are you in trouble? Is, yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, basically. Well, yeah. Um, if we shoot everyone, are we in trouble? <clears throat> also, are there security systems I might hijack 
<laughs> and turn the odds in our favour. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, there's no, no, there's no security systems. The, the problem, the only security system that's probably in place is a shotgun behind the bar. <laughs> like that's that's about yeah. it. Um, <clears throat> so we could only because last time myself and uh, Rob's character Ichabon, um last time we tried to hit things in combat we did amazingly <laughs> um, like if I can shoot our way out of this I will quite like if I get that impression even if it's a wrong impression I will quite happily draw a pistol and put a bullet through him um yeah, because I was also thinking maybe there is this guy, uh, this Diomedes has a um, a data pad I might be trying to remote hack and download information from as well. <laughs> okay, okay, I understand. Um, uh, make me a um, make me a tech test. Just do a tech test because you're not looking specifically for things that are on his person but you're looking for technology that's like on his person that's around him so roll me a test yeah. please okay um, he does have a number of bits and bobs on him uh, some are aug augments but nothing that screams data slate to you You also pick up on the fact that the two Ogren at the back have augments as well, but you knew that anyway from before. Yeah, I remember jamming them last time I <laughs> got into a fight with them. <laughs> yeah, for a bit of... Um, for for want of, of like trying to avoid metagaming, if you started a fight in this bar, odds are the people would probably... Um, they, I mean, they probably wouldn't fight you. Um, Rax may be like some son of a lord from some other planet but he's not for what for all intents and purposes um, an influential man on this particular planet or has holds a lot of influence over the people so if you <laughs> these aren't nice if you can't negotiate the, the, if you can't negotiate with your credits or your words then by all means you, you have to find another way to <clears throat> get the information out of this guy so yeah, <clears throat> it's um Listen, listen, kiddo, you got one last chance to play by our game or things are going to look a lot more red in this corner. So here's your last chance. Your two uh, bodyguards over there have got about mm, 12 seconds in them, I reckon, before their hump piles in the corner. The, your little buddy over here, I don't think he's got a lot in him. And the rest of these fools are going to scatter as soon as the weapons get drawn. So take your pick. <laughs> So Diomedes actually pipes up. Look, 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 guys, guys, I am fighting. I'm not stupid enough to throw away my life just for a bit of pride and a bit of cred. No, 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 no. I haven't lived this long on this planet just to be shot up by some robot man and his mates. Great. Then we've got a deal. You can point us towards these robot things. We can go to this this place and we'll all be happy. Skippity Tom. Rax sits back in his chair like I am. <clears throat> this just doesn't... I, I just don't see how I'm going to gain something from this. You haven't heard of the Grafus tomb? The Grafus family! In Gelfreda's family, incredibly wealthy family. There's got to be something down there worth having for someone else. More than just information, there's got to be something in there too that is worth your while. And I know you're taking a little bit of a gamble here, but how about an upfront payment? I'll give I'll give you 200 credits right now and still offer you the spoils of whatever we take from that to bless our interest. I think that's the best offer you're going to get. And these two just offered you a bloody nose, so it's a damn sight better than that. Okay, you're... Either I've had too much to drink or you're starting to make sense. So, listen, let's, let's discuss this, you and me. And um, he beckons you over to this corner here. Just there. And they're not too far away at all. Listen, I, I get what you're saying and uh, I, I do take you up on this offer. Um, what do you know of the of the treasures that are down there? 
give me something something that I can something tangible that I can go by give me some something that I can be guaranteed by before I let you borrow my man so one thing you might not know is that uh, the uh, one of the elders in the Gelfredus family one of the last to be put into this uh, tomb um, that is Alfred Galfredus was heavily augmented. He had one of the more advanced cybernetic legs on his right side. Now I've heard that this leg has those uh, pneumatic servos that make it so strong he could kick uh, he could kick a door in with it just by the flick of his toe. Not that he did, of course, a regal man like Alfred Galfredo. But hey, that servo leg, it's got to be worth something to you. And it's in that tomb, I swear. I reckon it's got to be in that tomb. These people buried, uh, un, un, uh, unlike the rest of us that fall to this fate and get turned into that protein, these people will have been buried, buried full body, I think. Uh, there's nothing recycled with their parts. So take it from me, there are some cybernetics down there that you want to get your hands on. Yeah. Amanel and Ikavon make me a... Oof. I want to say an awareness test. No. Sure. Okay. okay, nice and nice. Um, Amanel, first of all, you notice that um, that Rax is is stroking his pistol, like he's he's got his hand by the holster, so he's facing he's facing um, he's facing Fabio in a way that he's sort of slightly turned. And he could, for all intents and purposes, just be like scratching his leg or something. But Amanel, from where you are, you can see that his hand is slowly hovering over his holster. Ikavon, you also notice this as well. And um, but you also see Diomedes quite jittery as well. He's he's very jittery in his seat. He's like so he's on the edge of his seat, like quite jittery. Yeah. And um, Rax says. Okay, well, I'm not quite sure what to make of this. I don't like the sound of the augment. Don't get me wrong, could be valuable to the right person, but doesn't really interest me and doesn't benefit me in any way. Um, what would you guys like to do while he's replying? Are you getting ready? Are you like... I'm sort of, again, nonchalantly moving my hand to rest on both my pistol and my knife. Um, so I'm ready for anything. Yeah, yeah, so that very happen. casually ready, so okay. classic sort of fight western style thing where they just literally whip out the gun okay, straight describe away. Describe to me what that looks like. Are you are your hand? Have you physically brought a weapon out? Are your hands ready no, no, no. on the weapon? Like what's, what's so? It's what? Just sat casually, sort of leaning back in the chair. Um, do, they, do the chairs have backs or are they stools? It's up to you if you want your chair to have okay. a back. I'm sure they're all different. My chair has a back for the casual <laughs> leaning back and not falling off of it. Cool. But yeah, so knife is sort of slung across the left hip, gun on the right, and just literally hands like hovering over the two of those, but it looks like they're resting sort of just on sort of my uh, legs currently. And what about you, Ikavon? Yeah, I'm... Um... I've like sat at the table, but I'm like I've I've done the thing where like you know where you pull your gun out of the holster and you just point. I'm pointing my gun under the under the table at Diomedes. <laughs> okay. Like Hans oh, yeah. Hans style. Okay. Okay. So as as you as you do that, as you point your gun at him, he notices and he bolts towards the window. Bang! I fire. Yep. Okay. <laughs> make make a, make a shot. Make a test as he goes to jump out of the window. Um, okay. Ikavon shot first. Ikevon I love this shot. real fact that we're, so uh... Critic. Jesus! Okay. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> it's not just a flesh wound, is it? <laughs> Roll for damage, please. Roll for damage. 
Holy shit. Um, okay. Um, so, 7 plus 1 ED. Um, reliable. I think it's just plus one AD, so okay, so it's yep. seven plus one. Yep. <laughs> cool. So eight in total. So as he as he gets towards the window, you you blast his arm clean off. Like just, just through the shoulder and it just flies off and you hear Aah! as he stumbles forward, smashes through the window and lands outside. Um, simultaneously I want you, Fabio, to roll me an initiative test. This goes against Rax initiative, and whoever wins shoots first or reacts first. Oh. <laughs> okay, so talk to me about initiative. Uh, okay, so I've got the adjusted. Uh, so it doesn't look like I've got much initiative on this. It wasn't one of the skills That's uh, re enhanced. Uh oh. Okay. So. Oh no! Look at that. Oh! One <laughs> zero. We got a critical oh. fail. <laughs> wow! Look at that. Luck what a all. shit show. Luck of the oh, man. Man. Is it is. Um, at this, you both, I imagine, go for your pistols. And throw them. Yeah. As them. Fabio bring, uh, as um, as Rax brings his pistol up, what do you want to do with it? Because you have technically gone first. You can knock it out his hand. You can grab it. What do you want to do? He's swinging it, and it's like it's like bullet time. It's like slow motion. You can see yeah, his pistol I, coming towards you. Yeah, clumsily, I I knock my pistol against his pistol, and it just so happens that his drops onto the floor, oh. um, and, and mine's pointed up into the air. Perfect, okay, and then simultaneously whilst this is going on, Amanel, you've witnessed you've witnessed Ichabon shoot at Diomedes, who's flown out the window. Um, yep. Fabio has just disarmed Rax, Rax from his pistol, and um, you're basically back on your chair, ready to shoot at Rax. What are you gonna do? Uh, whip round and literally uh, try and shoot him in the head. Yeah, shoot Rax in the head, go for it. Yep. Um, so, can I take aim? Not, uh, not in this not particular in this. occasion. Nope. Just because it's like um, just happening in bullet time right now. It's all slow mo. Uh, no, that's fine. I, no, I just want to check rending because I can't remember what that does. Um, Extra damage. Remember? Yeah, no, that's fine. I was just, I'm sure it was something to do with damage. <laughs> so this is just straight up thirteen. I'm assuming I'm not within six of him. Um, you're kind of like two, so one, two, three, four, five, just out by half, I think. No, that that's fine. It. So it's only thirteen. Uh, wow, only five. Just, just five damage, yeah. No, no, no oh, uh, five, five to, to hit. hit. Yeah, you've hit him. You've hit him. Cool. <clears throat> um, so just ten damage. Ten damage. <laughs> Fabio, you you hear him go to say something. No way! And then his face just disappears. <laughs> a shower of gore and blood just in Amazing. front of your eyes. You've knocked the pistol out of his hands. Boom! His head just explodes. <laughs> and Jab and Brick are just like covered in the gore of their boss. The viscera. And they I turn to Ichabon and say, lot, they're taking a lot of time to take this in. And then. Yeah, if you want to say something while they're like trying I to turn to Ikavon and said, "I did tell him, I did tell him I'd blow his head off." I, I'm sorry, that's impressive. I am, I'm going to jump out the window to get this guy. <laughs> you fuckers! <laughs> you fuckers! <laughs> and they just charge at you both. So, oh really? One. Goes here. Okay. This one? No, you can move. You can move. That's absolutely fine. They. Took I was going to. I was going to tell him. I was going to tell him to beat it. Yeah. Jab, okay. brick. Yep. We gave him one too many chances. Don't make me regret stop this. Stop the tracks there. Get out of here. Make. Uh, <laughs> take uh, the afternoon off, boys. Get out of here. Uh, oh, you haven't had the last of us. Come on, brick. <clears throat> oh, 
They killed him! Jab, they killed him! And they, um, they run off, because they're just... Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I'll accept that. I, I don't think you need to intimidate. You've just blow, blasted the head off of their, uh, their boss. <laughs> yeah, I thought that... In yeah, one they're, shot, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're hired folks, aren't they? So, <laughs> I think uh, that pretty much, yeah, covers you for intimidation. But, uh, they've gone there, us their, uh, paycheck out the window. Yeah, I, I think they're right, though. I, I get the impression the more we play Wrath and Glory, the more we might bump into these boys. Um, <laughs> Turns yeah. out they were the big bad all along. I didn't write this to go this way. <laughs> you never do. You never I, tried the, I tried the hard negotiation. You were playing hardball with me. Yeah, true. I was like, I was like, they've got nothing to bargain with, so he's just gonna be like, fuck off. I, I guess, like, yeah. <laughs> I gave you the servo leg. <laughs> I told you how good it was, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so Diomedes has fallen out the window um, at this stage. You can't quite see him. He's. So what are you going to do next? Uh, I'm right. going to run out after him. I'm going to try and yeah. chase him down. Out the window, out the front. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go. Window. Fuck it. I'll just straight out the same window he went out of. Yeah, go for it. All right. Is that athletics or just go for it? Like uh, this is all because it's all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then as soon as that all happens, I'm like up, out, I'm onto the table. I'm like table, sofa, window, and all like one, two, three step. And I'm just kind of like straight out. And I'm like, is he still on the floor? Has he got up? Where is he? What? Where is he? Cool. Okay. So you fold it out of the window. I guess you got you two follow suit as well, don't you? I'm uh, I'm going through Rax's pockets. I'm an inquisitor. I want to know what he's got on him that is of any use to us. So I'm going to fleece fleece his corpse before I go anywhere. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you in a second. Then I'll come back to you. In a yeah. I want a, I want a data slate of his. Basically, I want a I want a key. A, you know, an electronic key to something. Uh, any anything uh, technological. I don't want. I'm not looting for shiny things. I want I want tech that's on him. Uh, you know, an information store of any sort. Mm, yeah, of course. Okay, so um, Ichabon, as you get outside, you notice a familiar face has uh, pinned Diomedes to the ground with his other arm. She's actually applied some sort of tourniquet to him as well, like just some rags that she's just tied around the stub that is now part of his shoulder and part of his part of his um, upper arm. And um, she looks up at you and she smiles. She says, "All right, fella." Um, I thought you guys were pretty interesting and I thought maybe you could get me a lift out of here and it turns out that you're, uh, you might just be doing that. Um, caught this guy jumping out the window with his arm missing of all things. Um, what's going on? <laughs> this is uh, uh, that you met at the, um, uh, bazaar. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're just negotiating. <laughs> wow, that's some negotiation. Yeah, well, we uh, we're thorough. Um, look, we we need him. Uh, the rest of us need. We got a few questions we need to ask this guy. Uh, he's got a few stuff. Um, we're happy to help you. And Lou seems like you've done us good service here as well. But uh, yeah, you guys want to come meet the rest of us? We're just back indoors. Um, we're broken glass on the window, so maybe we use a door. Uh, doors are pretty customary in most planets, so that would be advised. But yeah, I'll give you a hand to get him back in. And he's like, and my arm right. and flew off my fucking arm. Oh. Yeah, you got one more. I got another go if you need to. So I'd pipe up if I were you. Cool. We'll move you round to the front. Sorry, James. I didn't know where you wanted to be, um, so I just left you. No, no. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so you I'll make follow way with to um, Fabio, who is rummaging through uh, Rax's possessions. That's why I aim for the head. You see. <laughs> There are four things on Rax's possessions. The first one is his mastercrafted um, Laz pistol. Uh, the second one is a it's it's a badge of lords, and it's it's the House Overon badge to represent the fact that he is a lord of House Overon. Well, his father is, but so technically he is as well. But that's argu- arguable. Um, the third thing is a um, cred slate which contains X amount of creds you're unaware at the moment and Uh the last thing is a data slate as well which is password protected at the moment 
All right. So uh, what I'll do is I'll make sure Ikavon gets the data slate and I'll uh, make sure the barman gets the cred slate and I'll say to the barman, uh, charge, uh, charge all this to this account and we were never here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I could put that on the on the on the counter for him. <laughs> As you do so, the servitor wheels up, and um, in like a deep, like deep robotic voice, it's like enter code. Fine, I will um, go to uh, Ikavon and say, well, Ikavon, there's there's money on here if we can crack crack it, uh, and there's information on there if you can crack that too. Um, yeah, I'll give it a show. So, Tilia actually interrupts you and laughs. laughs. Like, like you could crack one of those. Trust me, I've tried cracking those. There's no way that you'll crack one of those. Yeah, you've never worked with us before. And you know, the cred, uh, and the cred slate probably is something that is difficult to crack because it's currency, and you can imagine in this digital age that's one of the things that has been made more difficult. I, I can totally get that. Mm. Um, okay, test, test to see if you can crack the uh, cred slate. Yes. Attack, yeah? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, please. Five, okay. So you know that there's a six digit passcode because you've handled these before. You do, however, also know that this is an Ypsilon level passcode. So, in order to be able to crack it, you'd need a room full of mindless, mindless men chanting numbers for days upon end, or you might be able to crack it if you had the help of someone who is a little bit more deft and masterful with technology of this kind. Um, currently, that is not you, but it could be you one day. At the moment, it's, it's not you. Hmm. Unfortunately, our, our buddy back on the ship isn't available right now. I could go to him, but I can't. I haven't got the resources here. Uh, oh, unless I'm going to get a call off world, but I'm, I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to have the time to do that. <laughs> okay, we'll take it with us then. Valuable for another time. <clears throat> yeah. And what about this data slate? Anything useful on there? Or do we uh, have the Diomedes first? I think this data slate might have something worth our while. Yeah, I'll take a look. I'll, I'll go for it and take a look. Okay, it doesn't take you very long to crack the password for this. Um, what you find on here is um, it's basically his his personal data slate for storing things like um, his goings and comings, uh, any kind of appointments that he have on behalf of his, of his father. Um, shipments and things like that as well. Uh, nothing that really sort of. I mean, there's a, there's a few dodgy entries that involve like gang, the, the names of gang members and like local thugs and things that he's trying to rub shoulders with. Uh, there's nothing that would really help you with your current quest, um, an assignment. But there could be something interesting on there if you sat down and had some time to read through. Sure. Oh, it's our next campaign, isn't it? This data slate is the start <laughs> of our next campaign. <laughs> what will we find on there when we take it back to the ship and look through it? <laughs> it All right. To die. <laughs> That's right. House Oberon. What yeah, secrets hey, does House Oberon yeah. have? Um, yeah. It's like we have no need to go to that dungeon anymore, so let's just call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we could probably I'm retire kidding. on this data slate. Yeah, honest, honestly, <laughs> I know this guy wasn't really interested when you talked about all those augmentations down there, but hell, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame you made so, up. <laughs> out of character, yeah. am I thinking it's the same <laughs> <made> house? <laughs> is it the same house Oberon as the ones that is an Imperial Knight house Oberon? Um, who knows? Because they are because house Oberon the, the the knights. That's like a group not to mess with at all. No, right. if you've killed a lord, if you've killed a lord of House Oberon, and it's the ones that we're fucked. You're currently, we're dead. About, and you're probably going to be chased to the ends of the galaxy unless you have a proper reason for doing it. So, which 
in 40k land you never have a proper reason for killing a lord <laughs> it helps when you can retreat back to the craft worlds uh, <laughs> yeah. you guys are screwed I'm fine uh, <laughs> right yeah let's hide in the webway that's the only only safe place right um, yeah yep. or you know Nicovon would go insane <laughs> Uh, and I'll uh, and I'll go over to Diomedes and kick him in the nuts. Um, <laughs> Diomedes, <laughs> oh, I've lost a bit of What are you doing that for? Diomedes, you total shitbag! You have ruined my morning. Where on You've earth? Ruined my, have... my morning too. <laughs> and uh, and I and I bend down to him and I stick I stick my finger in the uh, in the in the stump to cause him deliberate pain. Oh. I am I am deliberately messing with Diomedes now. Um, oh, oh no, please! Oh, oh. Diomedes, you'd better come up with the two librarium servo skulls in the next fifteen seconds, or and I'll look to Ikavon. Oh, we're going to rip you limb from limb. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, is this what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, my friend Ikavon is going to start with the fingers on your other arm and work his way down. No, so, no, no please. I, I, he's got augmentations. I don't need to. I'll just hack into those and activate all of his pain sensors. All at once, he'll feel all the pain for an infinity without us having to do any of the labor work. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll take you to them. They're, they're back at my place at the shanties. It's not far from here. Oh, please, please. I'll grab him by his neck, by the, by the, the cuff of his uh, whatever jacket he's wearing, and I'll haul him up. And I'll give him a boot, and he'll and he's walking first in front of us as we're as we're going out of here. Callia sort of just chuckles to herself. <laughs> I really like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so this bit this bit's a little bit theatre of the mindy because I didn't set up anything for this because I'm lazy. No, not because I'm lazy, just because it doesn't need it. So he leads you. Um... So. Uh... Diomedes takes you through uh, the, the sort of ramshackle buildings and lean-tos of Barista, the place that you were just at originally. And eventually, um, he stands outside a small mausoleum converted using like scraps of metal to be like a home. And there's there's like a there's like a garage add-on as well. And you can see um, through through one of the holes in the in the panels, you can see he's actually got stuff like a makeshift automobile as well. And it's like ornamentally decorated with skulls and like he's used the bones and like made ivory out of it and you can clearly see this is like um, a labour of love for him and this is just this, this automobile um, it's just it's in uh, it's just it's just in, in my house just there just just if you, if you go in there it's just it's on the first shelf just on the left there oh uh, I'll go in and uh, well I'll actually Ichabon, I'll point for Ichabon because he knows what he's looking for and can more easily identify. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just suggesting that there are many servo skulls in this room, potentially because, well, you know, this guy has been stealing all sorts of things, hasn't he? And uh, Rax yeah. suggested that there was a trade in servo skulls as well. Sure. Um, so, yeah, so the, the house there and there's a door. Um, so you, you want to go up and try the door and to get in, I suppose? Oh yeah, yeah. We're uh, he's told us where it is in his ramshackle place, so uh, we'll go in there. Sure. Make a um, tech test for me, Ikavon. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, at first, mm. annoyingly, you realise the door is locked, but. It's it's a simple cipher that you've you've written a hundred times, and you just beep 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 beep, beep and the door opens. Make me a <coughs> awareness test, please. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> a shotgun 
triggered to the door fires off in your face. But luckily, it's a <laughs> <not> fire. Fine! <laughs> <laughs> you stupid fuckers! <laughs> Ah. And at, once the smoke clears, he sees that you're absolutely fine. No, 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 I, di I didn't mean it. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please, please. I pull out my knife <laughs> and I walk up to him and very slowly and very carefully, I hold it to his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you want to inform us of? Uh, 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 I, I like I like you guys. <laughs> I'd think again because if there's anything else of this nature, this ear and I sort of very gently press upwards until a little trickle of blood comes out <laughs> at the bottom of uh, the cartilage. This ear won't be the only thing I take. No, 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 <laughs> no, there's, there's nothing else in there, I, pr I promise, I promise. Excellent. It's, it's just, it's just on the left, just first shelf on the left. Why don't you lead the way? Me, me, me. <laughs> okay, yes. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come, come on in, come on in. Uh, uh, any, anything to help. I then have <laughs> shuriken pistol in hand. Um, if you make any sudden movements, they will be your last. No, nice. No, no, no. no, no. I'm, a, I'm an ally. I'm a, I'm a friend. I'm a friend. Honest. <laughs> uh, just a little mm. trick. I knew it wouldn't. I knew it wouldn't get him. <laughs> and uh, he walks in, and <clears throat> at first, um, kind of sadly, he tries to point at the survey skulls and realises his arm is missing. And then uh, he looks down and points <laughs> with his other arm. <laughs> just, just there, please take him and <laughs> just leave me be, please. Uh, make a tech test on the survey skulls for me, please, Ichabon. Yeah. Yeah, as I go over and start oh. looking at him, I read them like a book. Yeah, you can, you can see that he's trying to tamper with them. And, <laughs> um, uh, he's taken some of the wires out and like swapped a few parts around. But but you, 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 this is, it literally lights up to you like the master builder from the Lego movie. Like, all the parts seem to come together in your mind and you just like flip it over and you're c connecting bits. And it, the guys around you are just like, wow, this guy mm -hmm. is just magic. And put it together and you're, there they are, two survey skulls. Um, they might not, they, they might not be in the best of condition, but they are fully functional again. Um, and as you put the last piece in one of them, it just it starts to hover and it flies off back towards the library. And then the second one, as you click the next part in, um, unfortunately it doesn't start to fly, but it lights up and activates. It's just, it's just in your hand now. Yeah, I actually, if I see the other one fly off, I almost like jump on top of this one like it's a giant beach ball or something and I'm like wait 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 we need to get information from these before they get back to the server okay. right so it's sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's trying to lift up and I'm like trying to put my weight on it to keep and, it down um, <laughs> to, conserve, to conserve its energy banks it's, it stops and it's just it's now in, they're both now in standby mode in your hand yeah well I'm not gonna lie I've kind of forgotten what we needed from these things but we need information from them right <laughs> Yes, they should take us to the uh, Grafus family tomb complex. That's the, right, uh, yeah. It's the item in there that we want, the Revelator, and actually that tomb complex could be the sort of thing that has a trap here, a trap there, and uh, well, these might tell us a, a lot about it. Uh, over to you. Hey, also he, and I point, I point at Diomedes, also he can tell us about the traps. Not like using his words, but his feet. You mean uh, like one of those terror-bound uh, canary things? Exactly, a canary. <laughs> Callie is listening into this conversation, and uh, she goes, "You're going into a crypt for something special." Yes, there could be something down there that we uh, that we want. Yes, uh, the grey, uh, the grey Galdafus. Gelfredus family crypt. Heard of it? Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, I don't know where it is, but it is quite, quite well known. Um, tell you what, if I help you down there, because you're going to need some kind of night vision, if I supply you with my night vision goggles, will you get me off this planet? I just, I just, I just, I'm, 
I grew up here and I just want to leave. Yeah, there's space for one more on our ship. We'd appreciate the help. You see Certainly her. Was. She looks really genuine. She's like, oh, brilliant. Okay. Um, will you take the skulls back to the library and I'll go get the kit and I'll meet you. I'll meet you outside the Jolly Undertaker. Let's do that. And uh, let's try and extract some information from these solo skulls here. And let's see what they've got on them. So she runs off to get, to get night vision goggles. That's right, yeah. Meet her outside the Jolly. Um, Rob. Not so, taken. Um, because you've got such a high score, you scored a 10 and a, a, an exalted icon on your raft eye. Uh, you know that the servo skulls wouldn't necessarily hold the information themselves. They are part of the kit to the library. So oh, you, need right, to, yeah. you need to return them to the library so that they can then, you could then access the database once again. They can fly off to find the correct um, information and then re-input them back into the system for you to read. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, we do need to... Okay, we need to go back to the thing is with these things, then. Oh, that's a shame. I, I was hoping they'd uh, hold all the information on them. All right, well, uh, uh, Aaron seemed dead keen to uh, to help us. Um, I'll tell you what, though... Uh, I'll tell you what, though, Amanel. It may be that uh, you want to stay around the... Um, Jolly Undertaker rather than go back to the librarian. All those sisters there, of course. <laughs> and uh, and he's gone yeah. uh, to the Jolly, yeah. Jolly Undertaker, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've offended me. Um, <laughs> Mike crapped out. So I repeat the last half of the sentence. Um, if you head to the Jolly Undertaker, I think it'll be a damn sight safer for you than uh, going into the library with us past the sisters. I, 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 probably best, yes. It's a good shout. Yes, I had to run away in fear for a moment. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, Ichabon and I will, will take these servos <coughs> back to, um, servitors, back to the library, and, uh, meet Amanel at the Jolly Undertaker. Uh, so he doesn't have to go past those sisters there, I think that's for the best. Yep, he's just gonna sit there and get drunk, isn't he? <laughs> Yep, <laughs> drinking my uh, Raxian brandy. So, <clears throat> as you near the library, you notice there are patrols of sisters walking around, more so than before. Uh, they seem to be much more alert as well. And uh, an inquisitor in golden armour and like a, a fashioned hat that looks a bit like a witch's brimmed hat, like um, a witch hunter's brimmed buckled hat. Um, and she's got like an accompanying servo skull as well. She's ordering the sisters around. Um, there's a new sign, huge sign outside of the li librarium that reads, Warning, Psyker on the Loose, Remain Caution. <laughs> um, so as you enter, um, Archivist Ab Abiabar sees that you've bought the servos, the skulls, and she smiles. And she's like, Well, well welcome back. Um, yes. Um, do 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 let them go, and and then you may use the information banks if you so wish. And she looks beaming. She looks. You basically kept her from being executed <laughs> and lose, losing a job slash executed. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> yep, yes. No uh, problem. These never left here, didn't they? Right. <laughs> of course not. Of course. Of course. <laughs> no. And, uh, and Ichabon will, well, it's over to Ichabon for what he does. You, you know, whilst I'm sure I can search on a, you know, these data systems, data banks, Ichabon knows what he's doing. You've got your robot yeah. answer yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, got our, our tech marine. <laughs> your tech bitch. Uh, you don't need to roll for this, uh, Ichabon. It's just basic input. Um, the, you pop the information in, and unlike last time, you see the two service goals float up couple minutes later they float back down and they tell you exactly where the Gulfreda's crypt is um, actually do make me a tech test because if you get a good score I'll give you some more information on the crypt oh yeah cool <sighs> big money yeah. eight okay I'll, I'll um, we'll say that um, you know where the crypt is it's in sector 12 
dash 34, B, as in B for bus, uh, colon 34 again. Twelve thirty-four B thirty-four. That's the one. Yep. Okay. Cool. And um, you also know that the um, the crypt is heavily guarded. Like, unlike most crypts on Daedalon, this particular crypt is just it, it's it's almost it's almost an anomaly. It's a bizarre. It's bizarre. It's it's full of. It's, it's it's just guarded. You, you it, like it says it's top security. So, um, and this security is um, private. So the Galfredis family have obviously got their own security on this right. script. Um, it's, it's noted. It's been noted that there, you know, that um, people and archivists that have tried to write about the the outsides of the crypt and how it looks and how decadent it is have been unsuccessful because they've been not allowed access because there's just so much security. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I relay the information to these guys. So we, we might be dealing with armed guards, private, probably by the family. Uh, so that needs to be, we need to find a way around that. <clears throat> I wonder if we've got anything that can persuade the mother uh, to, uh, to leave or... Uh to let us in uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure um, and I'll, I'll look through the uh, data banks uh, what uh, general information we have about um, crypt management you know like how is it are they serviced do they get cleaned do they um, are, is there anything to do with personnel other than a security force that might attend a crypt are there are they officially inspected periodically um, is there anything like that that means, uh, I'll be frank with my intentions, that means that we could arrive in some sort of disguise or faking that we are we belong to some other, uh, some organisation that has the right to be in a crypt? So is there anything in the data systems that tell me about crypt management or anything like that? Sure. Um, if, if you spent a, a few minutes just entering the right search terms for this... You're on mute. Oh, am I? <laughs> Oh. oh, I'm on mute to you, but not the rest of the world, okay. Uh, if you spent a few minutes just sort of typing in the correct search terms for this, you'd probably come back with things like, um, it's not uncommon for servo skulls carrying um, like li like little flamethrowers, like lighters to light candles, um, or to just keep an eye out for anything like unbeknownst and record data. Um, so you're almost guaranteed to come in contact with survey skulls. Now these survey skulls aren't um, equipped to fight back, so they're just servants. So typically if you were a grave robber or something like that, you'd go into the crypt and these survey skulls would be flying around doing their duties. They'd either ignore you or they'd try and rush off for help. So depending on what rudimentary functions they've been programmed with. Uh, very basic, not a threat, um, that's normally. Uh, would you find anyone, an attendee, in a crypt? 99% uh, of the time, no. You would not find a human being in the crypt. Unless it would be um, an ancestor, not an ancestor, you know what I mean, like a son or daughter visiting a loved one or something like that. Like visiting a loved one, probably, like one in a million chance that they would be here doing such, such a thing. Um, but yeah, you're almost guaranteed that whoever whoever or whatever is guarding the crypt is not human or not fully human like it would be things like servitors um, robotics like AI things like that just it's something that could last for an extremely long time and um, <laughs> you know just protect or, yeah so chances are you're gonna if, if, if it says that well the, the, the Gofredis um, family dealt with um, robotics to begin with augments robotics and things so putting two and two together you're probably going to come to the assumption that you're going to come across something like servitors or um, turrets or anything like that just something like that and are they do we know if that family is loyal to the Imperium are they generally oh, yeah, speaking yeah. <laughs> so yeah they the Galfredis family own 
a number of manufactorums on um, various planets, especially in the Gilead system. So they would be building things like servitors, um, weaponry, um, to some extent servo skulls as well. They probably have a dab in 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 that as well. Um, they're not they're not um, Admec. They are human, so they are you know one of the more prestigious human manufact like owners of manufacturums on in the Gilead system. So they are quite a prestigious family when it comes when it comes down to it, really. Okay, great. Oh, Thank they are you. All gone now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. The, are, are all of the Galfreda's family are dead. We know that. Yes, the last yes. one died with what you assume is the the um, the revelator. The revelator. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So um, we'll leave and go to the Jolly Undertaker to meet with Kalir and uh, Ikemon. Uh, Amanel, sorry. Yep. So when you get yeah. back there, Amanel and. Um, Kalia are already there and um, as you approach you can hear um, Kalia just trying to spark up conversation with Amanel she sort of leans in to him and sort of eyes him up and she's like you're not what you think you are you're not what what you want people to think you are are you and she says this quite cheerfully in like a sort of I know what you're up to friendly no no I'm not that friendly <laughs> funny guy <laughs> Uh, and she, she's people keep telling me that <laughs> she hands you your pair of night vision goggles um, I think they're actually called something different here they're mm. called like photo lenses yeah yeah so she hands you some photo lenses and uh, they've got a really beautiful emerald tint on the front of them on and, and the lenses and um, when she sees you guys she sort of waves quite cheerfully guys 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 here you go and she hands you both photo lenses and she puts hers hers on her head as well and sort of slaps the, the strap to her head. Right, did we get the information we needed? Are we going to get out of here? Oh yes, we're uh, we're ready to go. Uh, expect resistance at the door. And uh, well, if uh, if I can't be convincing, then uh, we might have to have to smash up some tech. Isn't that right? <laughs> Love the sound of that. And so, uh, Pastor Ikevon, he he's got to, you've got to have some. Do you have some sort of map or uh, shortest way there, Ikevon? Uh Yeah, well, the data slides kind of point us in the right direction. So, is I'm assuming I could probably download that information and just ping it on my map. Yeah. we might have or something. Yeah. So, um, Callie yeah. leans over and she's like, "Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes." <laughs> I've been there before. Don't ask me why, but I've been there before in that area. Um, I actually thought this would be useful. And as you turn around, she's parked um, Diomedes' car outside of the uh, the pub, the Jolly Sailor, and it looks like it looks like a comical old style Rolls Royce. You know, like what Cruella <laughs> Deville would drive. This like it's got a long, like elongated front with and it's all decorated with skulls and, and ivory and bones and it's like this it's like a black it's got like a black sheen to it. She's like, well, he's not gonna fucking drive it anymore, is he, with one arm? Thought maybe we could use this. Nice. <laughs> cool. And she's like, Yeah. Um, it was a bit of a struggle getting it here though. I can't actually drive, so um, <laughs> it was a bit of stop and start. So if someone wants to take the wheel, I'd appreciate. I just have that scene from um, Wolf of Wall Street in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was exactly like that. Yeah. Tired way back. <laughs> Still slightly quicker than walking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So who wants to drive? Does it come under piloting skills? Uh, yeah, we'll use piloting skill. Why not? Cool. Oh hell yeah! Can you pilot a spaceship? I'll be happy to drive. Oh, there you go. The uh, the elf butler has decided to drive for you. <laughs> Who's this? What's what's your pilot? Uh, I'm an elf. Eight, nine. Ten. <laughs> I got a massive pilot off. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can drive on the way back. <laughs> Shotguns. <laughs> 
Um, so you'll get inside the, the vehicle, and uh, I guess you're going to make your way to the crypt. I guess. Mm. Yeah. Sound good? Hopefully, oh, yeah. crunchy oh, yeah. and. Uh,